Good evening, everyone. I'm sorry it's quite late that I, we're doing our devotion today, but what matters most is the time, not the uh, the devotion. I'm sorry. What matters most is the devotion and not the time. But I I am I was at Kabanatuan earlier, so I was kind of busy. I was, yeah, I really didn't have time. It's, I'm full of meetings, meetings, and meetings, and then um, today's just the time that I got home. And um, I hope that you could still stay with me. Anyway, this is Facebook, so you you could watch it anytime. I hope that you could still follow and continue with the series that we have. So today, we'll continue our series about God's plans. So, so far, we've talked about letter P, letter L, and letter A. So, letter P stands for perfect. God's plan are perfect. No matter how we try to look at it, no matter how we try to justify our plans according to how we want it to happen, let's always remember that God's plan is perfect. Next is the letter L. Letter L is larger. God's plan is always larger than our plans. Some, uh, most of the time when we plan things out, it's always for the best of us. It's always for the best of our family or the community that we're in or uh, our uh, immediate family members but seldom we do plan about the future of everyone so God plans everything out for everyone not just for yourself but for the greater picture okay yesterday we talked about the letter A okay and so today we'll continue our series about the letter uh, the um, God's plans and we are now at letter N okay and before we begin of course let's pray Father in heaven, we praise and thank you for today. Lord, you have been so great and good to us. No matter how um, stubborn we become, no matter how stubborn we are at times, no matter how we try to um, deviate from you at times because we want to have and follow our own plans, Lord, thank you because you're so patient for us. You never change, Lord God. You're always the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, as we study your words today, let it be you will be speaking, Lord God, not me. If there are any sins in our hearts, Father, I pray that you clean us from all these mistakes, from all these sins, times that we think that we're doing the right things but have offended you. Please clean us, Father, and help us to draw near your throne today. And as we study your word, Lord, open our hearts and minds so that we will be able to grasp your message today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, our verse for today is found in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. And it reads, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. <laughs> That's included in my prayer. Why? What does that mean? It just means that God's plans are neutral. Letter N is for neutral. So no matter how we how we offend him no matter how we try to deviate from him no matter how we try to follow our own plans his plan he will still remain neutral some of us thinks that if we sin and if we fall into temptation that God is departing from us some of us thinks that when we fail that we don't deserve it we don't deserve God's love anymore but you know what let me ask you this question when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, are we free from sin? We're already sinners, right? And how come, how would it be that Jesus died for those who, who was not born yet? So meaning, when Jesus died on the cross, He died for everyone from the time that uh, he didn't die on the cross yet from the beginning of time he died for their sins for the people during their time during his time for the people that was there he died and then for the future sins of us he died for everyone so we could see the neutrality of God there it means that no matter how we try to react uh, whatever it is that we're doing or even if we have um, have not sinned or have not committed that sin yet he knows everything and he has forgiven all of that he died knowing that you will sin again 
He died knowing that you will follow your own plans. He died knowing that we could always deviate from what He intended us to do. And yet, He gladly accepted it. He gladly still died on the cross for our sins. My friends, how we react to God's love does not change whatever His plans are. If you want to follow God right now, you still have the same plans. And that is for you and me to be with Him. If you don't follow God's plan and just neglect His words, His plan is to, is to, uh, is to have you still with Him in heaven one day. He will be patiently waiting. He will never change. His love will not change for you and me because, because we are sinners. He died on the cross during the time that we were sinners. So if you think that you have sinned a lot, if you think that you can't be forgiven, oh, my friend, all you need to do is to approach the throne of God to be forgiven. He's just waiting for you with an open hand to approach His throne and repent from your sins. He's just waiting for us to submit ourselves to Him. He's waiting for you to invite Him inside your heart. It doesn't matter what problems you've caused. It doesn't matter what mistakes you've done. It doesn't matter how heavy you think your sins are. What matters most is that you approach His throne and repent from all your sins. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for every one of us. But He didn't die just because He wants us saved. He died there so that we could feel that He loved us no matter who we are, no matter what we are, no matter what it is that you're doing right now. He still died for you. He's neutral. He will not change. He is a loving God. And He will not change that. But He is also a God of justice. So that doesn't mean that because He loves us, He will just erase all things. Yes, he, has, he will erase all things. He will erase all the sins. But that doesn't mean that He is not a God of justice who will also pursue and put justice. So if ever we don't follow Him, if ever we, we just neglect His words, if ever we don't commit to Him, that just means that justice will still be upon us. Even if you have accepted Him, justice will be upon us all. In 1 John 1, 9, it talks about how if we will be able to confess our sins to Him, He will be faithful and just to forgive us from all our trespasses. Meaning that He will forgive us from our sins. Yes, that's not a question. He will forgive us from our sins, but He will also put justice. That doesn't mean that if you stole something today, and then you ask God for, for, for forgiveness, that you don't have to suffer the consequences of your sin. If it did bad someone to someone, if you if you hurt someone, if you stab someone or whatever hurt that you've done, it doesn't mean that if you prayed and asked for forgiveness, yes, God will forgive you. But that person may apply justice to you. You may be put to jail. So asking for forgiveness and repenting from our sins and being forgiven by God doesn't excuse us from the justice that should be done for all our sins. But the great thing about that is that you don't have to die in hell. He saved us from that sin. But the consequences that we have to suffer for, for our human loss will be applied still. So if you sinned, if you stole, if you tell a lie, you will be charged with the loss that surrounds us here. But God has forgiven you. So don't confuse yourself. Don't tell yourself that if God will forgive you, that you are free from the punishment 
and the consequences of the sins that you've done. For example, uh, let me just repeat the example just to make it clear. For example, you stole a cell phone. Someone caught you. Just because you prayed to God, Lord, I'm sorry that I, 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 stole, I stole the cell phone and I sold it. Because I have this need. Yes, God forgave you. God will forgive you. But the person that you stole that, that cell phone from can apply justice to you. So when that person applies justice to you and, and puts you to prison, don't tell God, Lord, I thought that you have forgiven me. And why is it that I'm still? Yes, God has forgiven you. But the justice that we have here in our earth, we are governed by it. So it will still be applied to you. So please don't make it a, a reason or don't make it an excuse that when you are forgiven by God, that you could just get away with every sin that you've done. Remember this, my friend. He is neutral. He will not change. He will continue to love you even for the fact that you continue to sin. What He will do is in His plan. Because He intends us to become a holy generation. A generation that will be loyal. A generation that will be trustworthy. A generation that will be a holy and pleasing sacrifice for Him. And He will continue Continue and continue to create plans so that you and me will be that kind of person. That's why He sends out these problems. He sends out these issues. He sends out the struggles that we have so that we will be that person He planned us to be. My friend, God is the same yesterday and today and forever. The question is, would you still be the same? Would you still be the stubborn person that you are today after hearing this message? Would you still just shrug off this message and tell God that, mm, I don't need you. Yeah, I need you. I believe you. But I'll accept you when I'm about to die. I'll accept you when I'm ready to give up everything. No. My friend, when you accept Jesus Christ right now, He will be the one to change your life. You don't have to plan for your future. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you don't have to plan for your future or the, the things that you want to become, the things that you... Yes, it's okay to plan for it. But what I'm trying to say is that how you will be able to change yourself, it's up to God. Because the fruits of the Holy Spirit should show in our lives once we accepted Him. So it's up to Him. Just, just to give you a personal experience, I've been trying my whole life to change. I used to drink a lot. And there were times that my wife and I would talk, ah, let's not drink anymore. Let's forget about drinking. Yes, there are times that we forget about drinking. We stop drinking because we drink every night. So we stop drinking, but it only lasts for a few days. Weeks even. About two weeks is the most. After that, go back to the same person that we were before. Why? Because with our own efforts, we really can't change ourselves. But with God, He will be able to change you. So you don't have to worry about how you'll be able to live your life that will be worthy of God. It's His task. He will be the one to mold us, to change us, to prepare things for us so that we will be able to become the holy persons that He wanted us to be. That's His intention. And that will not change. It depends on you. Do you want to change and make that decision to allow God to rule your life? Repent. Because if you don't repent, if you don't accept that you're a sinner, then you may think that you don't need God. But you do, my friend. That's why you need to accept Him first. You need to accept your status, that we can't live a life without Him, that we are sinners and we're bound to hell. We need to accept that. And then after we accepted our status, we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Accept His forgiveness. And once He gave us this forgiveness, then, let the Holy Spirit flow in our lives 
and you will see the changes in you that you never thought could happen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your words. Truly, Lord, you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And you will remain the same forever. Because you are God. You are in nature good. You are in nature holy. And you loved us so much that prior to us being born, you allowed your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins and our future sins. You know everything, God. Lord, we just want to come near and draw near your presence today. Mend our hearts, Lord God, from the pain that we have been suffering. Mend our hearts from the issues that we have been trying to overcome, the struggles that we can't do anymore. Lord, help us. Change our hearts, Lord God, as we repent from our sins, Lord. May you guide us to live a life that's in accordance to your will. Forgive us from our sins, Lord, and become the masters of our lives. Be our Savior today, Lord, and help us to live a life that shows your fruits in us so that people may see that you are true and real God. Let all the praises and glory be for you and for you alone. Through the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for watching. My friend, don't waste time. Today is the time of your salvation. Accept Jesus. He loves you yesterday. He loves you today. And He'll love you forever. God bless you. Bye.